What's going on guys? It's Elam with another video today. Um this is this video is about um on shape uh for beginners how to assemble different parts together. So for those of you who haven't uh, already uh, you should check out my other video, the first video which is Intro to On Shape Part Studios how to make your own parts. So you should check that out. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notifications bell to keep up with my latest uploads and also to uh, check out my other videos if you haven't already. So let's get started. So here I'm going to build a very simple toy car. Um, nothing fancy. It, this I have. Let me show you the parts. So this is going to be a sub assembly. I'll explain that later. So this is the body right here, where the wheels are attaching to. This is the wheel. So you might wonder why I have circles like right here, cylinders. Uh, on each side it is so I can show you that they turn in the model. Here is the axle for the wheels, and this is the top part. So I'll really I could uh, make this one thing, the body and the top. I could put both of them together. I can make it one part, but uh, for the sake of the video of showing sub assemblies, I'm going to make it two different parts, like as if simulating, as if in real life you are going to take two parts and put them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my body and top. So this is an assembly, what an assembly looks like. So you can insert parts, put them together, make them spin, make them move up and down, have gear relations too. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to hit insert. If you haven't seen my uh, previous video, this is what insert does. You can insert different parts. So in the last video, there wasn't any parts, but in this video, uh, in this video, in this uh, document right here, you have all your parts here, access to all your parts. So I'm going to insert my body. And now you can see it's right there. I can move it around, place it wherever I want, click, leave it right there if I wanted to. But what I like to do is having it... Um, fixed to the origin. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to click my body, but I'm just, I'm not going to move it at all. I'm just going to hit check. So now you've inserted your part. So I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and you have all these options right here, an option called fix. Click that. And then let me full screen that. There you go. So now this part can't move. See it like just can't move at all. I'll show you. It can't move. It's fixed. It's good to have this for Revolutes, which I will explain later in the video and so that you don't have just parts flying around in space So I've inserted a part here One thing I'd like to mention is the way you make your part is how it's going to be in so I made this for my top from the top Right, so I started off like this. So this is how it's going to be inserted from the top view so it's best to, if you want to be organized to make your models based on how would you would uh, see them so like for example if I was going to uh, look here like this would be the front. I did not orient this the front and the right correctly But I oriented the top and the bottom correctly. So for example the wheel I oriented it from the left and the right so that way I could put it on the um, Car easier. So let's see, let me go back to this assembly though I may have mixed up like the orientation it isn't extremely important But if you want to stay organized that is an option that you can do so now we have this right so I have two assemblies here. Assemblies are a cube inside of a cube, kind of like what an extrude looks like. So now you have a part. What can you do? So you can't do anything really right now with this part. You just have a part just floating in space, well, or fixed to a certain point. So to do actually something, you insert something else. So I'm going to insert the top. Move it around like the other parts. I'm just going to click here. doesn't really matter where I click right now. So now I have two parts. This one can't move. This one can move wherever it wants. So there are different ways you can move. You can just move this like this, or you can click on the part, and then it'll show you these arrows right here. So you can move it side to side, like this, up and down. You can also rotate it a certain amount of degrees if you want. And you can rotate it this way too if you really want to, depending on what you would like to do. So 
now we have these two parts we want them to be together I want to have this part on top of this part so what I'm going to do is uh, like I said in the previous video I'm a keyboard shortcuts guy I can hit the M key and put mates or you have these options right here all these are called mates for those of you who are professional modelers or like have 3D modeling experience and never use Onshape, um, constraints are called mates. Like in PTC Creo, they call them constraints. Here it's called mates. So you have different ones. Fastens, revolutes, sliders, planers, cylindricals, pin slot, ball mate, and parallel mate. Um, well, ones we're going to be focusing on today for beginners are going to be the fastened and the revolute. I'll go quick over your argument. So fastened, two pieces are together, but they can't move. Like that, they're not going to move anywhere. They're just going to stay stuck to each other. Like you kind of glued them together. So there, there's no degree of freedom at all. So a revolute, on the other hand, is you have two parts spinning together. So that's kind of like a a wheel to an axle. Like if you want it to spin, you can spin it uh, around the axis. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically quote unquote glue these two pieces together uh, with the fasten mate. So kind of simulating what I would do in real life. So let's say this were two pieces of wood. I would glue them together. They wouldn't move at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this one, the fasten mate or M. And then you have fasten one. It shows red, right? Like red warning light is because I don't have any mate connectors. Mate connectors are where your um like which faces are you of the shape are you gluing together? So as you can see now I have different options. It shows me this um these like arrows and like it kind of highlights the the planes and faces of the each shape. So this little circle with um the blue, green, and red flashes in the middle means something. So if I clicked here and I also clicked here, the same place, it would center the piece on. Th this is very useful. Uh, before, when I didn't know this, I was modeling, and then I would have to put exact an exact distance, which would be uh, such a pain to do. But I solved that by just like clicking those uh, two mates, and then I can center it on the, um, on the place so they're not centered. But I really don't want to do that, because I want um, my vehicle to be, I want the top to be, um, flush with the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the line and then I can click if I can get it right Right here, so you click that so you see It's going to fasten to the line. So now I just have to click this corner right here And boom they are flush together they are um, fastened together and in a very neat way so you have two checks here. If you check here, you don't do any more fasten mates. But if you have, let's say, tons of more parts that you need to glue together or fasten together, you would click this check, and then it would give you another pop-up for another fastened mate, which is very useful. But right now, that's that's um what I need for now. So right here, I made uh, the top of the car and the body of the car. So this is actually called a sub-assembly. So they're very useful because then you can, uh, believe it or not, you can insert assemblies into assemblies. So this is my main car assembly. I don't have anything. In it. This is my body and top assembly. So I'll show you how to insert assemblies. It's this. It's really simple. It's just the same thing. You have your parts here. You insert here. But this time you insert assembly. I recently created this assembly, so the preview is still generating. But based on the title you can tell which one it is and you can click on it and you have it right there and then you can hit check i'm going to uh, fix this because there's no need for that to be moving let's see yeah so here's what we have our car now now we can add the wheels and the axles i can create a sub assembly for wheels and axles too if i wanted to but for the sake of time i'm just going to insert them individually into this main car assembly. So, axle, right here. So, how long is this? It's 4.5 inches. The car's width is 4.5 inches. So the reason I made it longer is so that, because the wheels are 0.25 inches, 0.25 times two is 
0.5 so I'm gonna I add an extra 0.5 so that way the the wheels and the axles will be flush against the car so what I'm going to do I'm going to hit I or insert whichever you prefer and then I'm going to click axle click and there you have an axle you can also you can insert multiple parts at the same time so I can just do axle again and why not insert uh, all my wheels too um, if you remember what I said before about the orientation that is key because um, it's gonna end up like this so it can kind of be a little messy but you don't have to orient it like that so now I have four wheels two axles and this uh, frame so I'm going to insert these two axles into the holes right here so, so if you don't want to uh, see these tires there is an ins a really good feature you can click on it right click and you can hit hide so boom it's gone it's not deleted you can hit show all or show all instances show all instances shows all the parts but if I hit this again and I hit show all it would show the mates so if you made a lot of things together like a lot of fastens if you glue a lot of pieces together or make a lot of things spin you'll have uh, these things showing so you can hit the keys J and K and then they'll go away um, oh that rhymes that's pretty cool so anyways uh, let me just hide these parts right here if you if you drag from the right it'll highlight anything in its path and then if you drag from the left I don't think it will like that you see it really didn't highlight anything so drag from the bottom right right click hide and now it looks a much neater parts are still in the assembly and now you can assemble your axles so I'm going to do a fasten mate because I mean the axles can move but they really don't have to so I'm just going to hit M or fasten which is this one if you have a fasten and say you wanted a revolute you have so many different like options here but right now we need a fasten all right I'm gonna take my uh, shaft and I'm going to center it on here so there is a big hole right here really wide so what I can do you can see as I move through like the circle this middle circle right here it can move between different like spots so right here would be putting the axle on the edge but on the center it would be centering the axle so if I click here I have one make connector and then right there boom it's on the center so there we go the axle is centered no um offset required if i um had done it like that you can also do let's say if you click this offset you can choose how like the distance you want so it'll show you your x y and z axis based on where the part is and then you can you can change the distance so um, oh wait i have a red because i just hit check on a fasten that didn't have anything Or wait a second. I apparently have a check here. So yeah, that is a fast amount. Yep. Yeah. All right. I got a little confused because I realized I had a sub assembly in here. But anyways, I'm going to insert the other one. In. So fasten mate. I'm going to. It really doesn't matter which order you do. Uh, like which which one you click first, as long as you click two. For those of you who used uh, Creo, PTC Creo, the good part about on shape is that you don't need three different uh, points, like three different constraints in order to have it like a coincident. You just need two. So I'm going to hit my check right here since I don't really need any more fastens. So I have two axles right here. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to kind of real quickly change the... Um, appearance of my body so I'm gonna make it a bit clear so that way you can see what it looks like there we go this is our main car assembly right here two axles a body and a top which is was an assemble sub assembly now the wheels wheels are going to be different because we are doing instead of a fasten mate a revolute mate so uh, I'm gonna explain this again a revolute mate is basically um, an object could spin on an axis of rotation so I'm going to show all instances, not show all, just show all instances, and I have all my four wheels right here. I'm going to hit this one, 
It's um, a cylinder with an arrow like going around it. It's what a Revolut Mate is. I'm gonna click on it. Like these red um, warning signs, like you don't, normally don't have to pay attention to them unless if you hit check and then there's actually warning signs means maybe you overdefine something like something that basically the laws of physics would not uh, comply with that. That's the reason why you have some of these red checks. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on the edge of this. So this circle. So this part of the wheel is attaching to something and I'm just going to click on the edge of this. As you can see, it is on the, um, what do you call the um, axle. I'm going to hit check and I'm going to do the other wheels too. Check. I don't need any offsets. For the offsets of this one, you, you don't have an X, Y, Z axis. You just have a Z axis, which it's moving like uh, across the axis. Oops, my bad. Let's see. Let's X that. So what I did is I accidentally mated the two wheels to the same axle. So I'm just going to try to change that. You could also, another way you could do these wheels and axles, you could have a fasten mate. So you can fasten this to the, these wheels to the axles so that the wheels only move when the axles move and have a revolute uh, with um, the body. So let's see. Wait, let's see. Do I... Okay, there we go. Okay. So. I, I made the same mistake here. I'm sorry. So, click here, and I click there, and that's it. That's it. I'm just going to hit check for that. All right. Now, I can do this one. So, right here, and right here. All the wheels are attached to the car. This is our finished car. So, let's see. Yep, that's our finished car assembly. So I'm going to show all, and then it shows all the mates that uh, were required in order to attach this part. And then I'm going to hit the keys J and K in order to make those disappear. So J and K, because they can be sometimes annoying, as you can see, because that's a lot of mates. Since you can't really see the axle, I'm going to change the transparency of the axle real quickly so not at 50 percent but i'm just kind of at one for now and then now you can see the axles there so the reason i have these cylinders these cylinders right here these little circles are so you can see that it moves so each wheel moves independently if uh the body and the top were not fixed to the origin and like were able to move i would not be able to show you this so that's another reason why you have to fix it to the origin all of these wheel moves. All these wheels move by themselves. <laughs> also, you can go into the mate. So, if you want to edit one of these mates, like how I attach them together. So, let me click on this one. I can do this. I can hit. It's like this play button. It'll show you all the angles of freedom that it has. So, it'll show you how it can rotate. So that way you can see uh, where it rotates and how like. It would be simulated in real life so now if I wanted to I could build this car in real life like if I if I didn't know how to I could just look at this model and see how I could build it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, I'm gonna try to keep posting more in the future especially about on shape and 3d modeling maybe more for expert videos but this is for a beginner video if you have any questions at all please comment down below and I'll try my best to respond to them if I can um, like, share, uh, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to keep up with my latest uploads. And as always, thank you for watching. Until next time.